Team India secured the ninth consecutive Test Series victory against the West Indies, winning the current series 1-0. The second match ended in a draw due to incessant rains uh, on the fifth day. The last time West Indies won a Test Series against India was way back in 2002. Yes. In the rain-affected match of the Port of Spain, not a single ball was bowled on the fifth day, resulting in a draw. India had won the first match by an innings and 145 uh, runs, leading to their overall victory in the series. Next, Team India will face West Indies in a three-match ODI series starting from 27 July. In the second test, India set a target of 365 runs for West Indies. By the end of Sunday's uh, play, the West Indies needed 289 runs to win with eight wickets in hand. Unfortunately, rain played the spoil sport, preventing any play, and consequently, India had to settle for a 1 0 series win. India had a co commanding lead after scoring 438 runs in the first innings and restricting the West Indies to 255. They declared the second innings at 181 for 2, setting a target of 365 runs for the West Indies. The match, uh, the fifth day, saw relentless rain leading to its cancellation. With the series, with this series win, India extended their streak of nine consecutive test series win and it goes back from 2002 but that's important uh, that india has secured some points at the wtc cycle and that's what will keep india in the hunt for the next year's final anyways joining me is uh, a senior correspondent from port of spain jilani you've been with us throughout the test what do you think of the overall performance of both the teams first we'll start with west indies and then go on to india jilani Hi. Good, good night, Sunil. Thanks again for having me on your show, on the Cricket Show. Good morning to all your viewers in India. Um, yes, well, the West Indies showed a lot more fight in the second test. We, we all saw that. Um, it still, it was unfortunate that it, the entire day's play today was washed out by rain. There's a lot of rain in Trinidad these days. But at Fairly West Indies showed a lot more fight. They showed a lot, a lot more determination, especially from the, from the batsmen to occupy the crease, which was good to see. Um, India showed their quality in this match. Rohit Sharma right. leading the way. He's very, they showed their batting display in the second innings was impressive to get quick runs, to get enough time to put West right. Indies in to go for an outright win, but it just didn't work out for them this time. But I felt India was still the better team and they showed their class in, in the series. Well, India was certainly a better team. They've been a WTC finalist on two consecutive occasions weren't lucky to win any of the championship however however what were the positives that you saw coming in uh, from india now we've spoken about the west indies team their performance the player the skipper yesterday but what about india's overall the top order bat batting lineup and of course siraj yes well of course um jaswal on on debut just as just as first series made his debut in dominican he really showed that he he seems ready for international cricket. Um, you saw Ishan Kishan scoring some runs in the second test and other other youngsters taking the opportunity because as we spoke about, quite a few of their bowlers are, especially their frontline fast bowlers are missing in action. Um, we have guys like Jasper Boomer, yes. Mohamed Shami Natarong, also Mohamed Siraj, as you mentioned, Sunil. He had a, a good series, especially a good test match in in Port of Spain, at the Queen's Park Oval, and he won the man of, man of the match in this in right. this last match. Jilani, we also have uh, one of the very senior Indian uh, cricket journalist who's philosophical and critical at the same time. Very rare quality to have. We welcome Mr. Harpal Singh Bedi. Mr. Bedi, Bedi Saab, uh, Mohamed, sir, uh, you've got to talk about Siraj, who came in as the spearhead and took the wickets and completely destroyed the West Indian batting. Your views on him, sir? I think he bowled well on a pitch which was not so helpful. Yes. And took five weeks and gave India a chance. That is a different thing that it was, uh, Laje was washed out. It is not his fault, but he bowled well. But come to think out, what, this series worth it. In the sense that, yes, we got some points for the World uh, Test Championship. That's but right. overall, the standard has gone down so badly, unimaginable. If a person like me who have seen West Indian at the peak, 
it is a i don't know what has happened to them I feel very sad for them the question mm-hmm. is that you could uh, bat the way you batted you bowled you the way you bowled and a uh, uh, little bit of resistance of uh, west indians no uh, uh, no aggression for which the west indians were well known no crowd no drum beating so that a whole charisma or whole charm of the test match in west indies was uh, totally gone there was no excitement excitement was only in youtubers or What? in, uh, in YouTube, uh, youtubers otherwise i see no nothing much has been except that we got some points as far as siraj is concerned he is a genuine fast bowler and he we uh, he would i think he has a role to play in the world cup Absolutely, he's got a role to play in the World Cup. But we'll take a step back, and I'll quote a, a conversation that I had with uh, Carl Hooper a fortnight ago, who's also the assistant coach in the coaching staff, and he was dismayed over the lack of uh, the the talent pool channelization that comes in from the uh, lower grassroots level. Well, good time to ask a question to uh, Jilani. Jilani, what do you think is the fundamental problem with the West Indian cricket? Is it the money? What is the attraction? They still have players, some of the best players in the T20, but when it comes to the longer format, they seem to be, you know, high and dry. Your views? What is the problem? Well, one one problem we can look at soon is our the level of our the level of our first class competition in the west indies is not up to standard um one of one of our former presidents made it, made it a professional league that attract more people to compete in the league and have a good standard of living but the standard in our first class cricket is very poor you see very low scores teams right. being bowled out for 150 200 runs so that way that's where it needs to start and i think a lot of money people have been calling for more money to be pumped into the grassroots level of west indies cricket that's also an issue so even and youth level cricket so there's a lot of issues that needs to be ironed out in west indies cricket for us to make it back to the top of world cricket there's a lot of issues well absolutely uh, bedi saab we've spoken about the newcomer uh, siraj taking on the lead and running in pace and just doing something with the crease where he had nothing to do in terms of it wasn't aiding so similarly what is the other bright spark that you would see in the indian uh, test match here for the indian either batting or keeping your views that he proved that he is still irreplaceable and this also the more he plays the more uh, it hurts the people who drop him they must they are not in a position to show the face why they drop him in london Uh, when they were playing the world test championship right so he has his amazing and the kohli scored in his century but one thing about overall this uh, was expected uh, that we will win against uh, west indian we means indians anybody any team which is going there any team which can compete away uh, home west indian can compete and i mean no uh, derogation i am not derogating them but only team which uh, with big big entry on uh, level is uh, bangladesh and sri lanka and zimbabwe this is a very sad a team which boasts so many players and talking about infrastructure there was hardly any infrastructure at a time and all those greats were playing the legends were playing but they played their heart out they they dominated there was the west indies or this uh, in africa uh, in africa or in caribbean they hardly in uh, sports structure but people uh, or the players or the athletes they, they are shining because of their own determination that thing is lacking in this team a lot of people say that now west indians are interested in basketball yes they are very interested in athletics <laughs> but they the people uh, that those who were not interested in athletics or uh, the basketball they played cricket and all the names big names they come from various uh, islands but they formed a very formidable team i don't see i don't know what the reason is even if they in fighting uh, in the western indian cricket board they they are not seeing each other uh, eye to eye but uh, that is i know i this is not been i have not been able to explain lot of people say money makes a difference but what uh, there was no money when they were dominating there right. was no money when uh, right they used to in fact and people jilani so i was there. present at the time when west indies lost to netherlands at the icc qualifiers and the entire team was dismayed in fact there was so much so down that they could not even talk to each other they were so down and out and one of the senior guys who played for uh, west indies did make a comment that it is the saddest day 
for the West Indian cricket and it feels as if somebody from the family has passed away. What accord, Mr. Bedi had raised a very pertinent point saying that there is no sense of pride. Do you, do you see that coming from Port of Spain, you're there covering the matches, the first class games and meeting the players. What is your view, Jalani? Anybody's game yes. to do, we need uh, no expertise on that. Any day on that day, particular on the 20 overs will be bold. If somebody takes it, the ball in, in four hours, he can create havoc. If some batsman at the uh, number eight also can create a problem for the uh, uh, bowling side. So I think uh, let's leave aside T20, but in uh, 50 overs and um, 50 overs, they may put up some fight. But in test team, they they no sense of pride left for, uh, for West Indian. It is a, it is a sad uh, scenario. And to those who are talking about money, if there is no money, but then they are producing the uh, athletes of the world standard. There is no money, but they are uh, they are doing, doing well in football. In uh, in West India, I am talking about. Right. That in, it, it Jilani, would you world. agree? I will get in you here from Port of Spain live. It's midnight. I want your views on this particular point that Mr. Bedi has raised. Is there no sense of pride playing for West Indian flag? Um, I have to agree, agree with Mr. Bedai somewhat. Um, a lot of our young players are some of them. Some of them are motivated by money, so you see a lot of them choosing to just play T20 franchise cricket in the IPL and all these T20 leagues around the world. But I, I, somehow I still feel that some of them <laughs> still have the pride to play for West Indies. They may not. That may not show up on the field all the time, but we've become a society that. Some of the youngsters, as, as, I, as I said, have they really more interested in playing in the T20 franchise. The Absolutely. In fact, when you Which see at the, at the auctions, things are really uh, exciting when, when a West Indian name crops up, whether it's Carlos Braithwaite or uh, whether it's your Bravos and the, and the Polards of the world. We get certainly ex excited. We have some of the more uh, talent coming in for the auction pool next year. But more importantly, Bedi Saab, before we move on to the ODI squad, which is, uh, which is announced by the West Indian board, your final take on the memory of, uh, of, of one of your finest India-West Indies test matches, considering you've been covering it for four decades. In fact, I remi reminded Carl Hooper about the 1988 test series, which happened in Kotla, where Sanjay Manjrekar made his debut. Winston Benjamin was bowling. Sir Viv was the skipper, and he was like a youngster at the first slip, enjoying the Kotla uh, uh, legacy and, and the hospitality of Delhi. What has been your memory of one of the finest test matches India played against West Indies? I used to, you used to shudder when the watching match in stand or even press. Watching, box. watching, sir. Watching. We are all fans here. Bold. And we're thinking what will happen to the batsmen. That was a terror, or you can say aura, or a terror, or what uh, that uh, bossism the uh, West Indian had. Over the cricket in Test cricket, their uh, batting was one man show. Even if Vivian Richard could decimate every anybody, so you remember. Uh, but at the moment, we, why can't we go to pass? Uh, cricket creates so many myths. Um, it's not uh, that every myth is correct. That we did this and we did that. At present, uh, West Indian cricket is languishing, and it has to survive if you want the cricket to flourish. You cannot uh, play cricket with four or five countries, India, Pakistan, West Indies, uh, 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 South Africa, in, uh, England and New Zealand, uh, you, or Australia. You need more teams and more teams are not coming. Unfortunately, how much money, the m amount of money ICC has paid, the people are simply not, uh, and there's all, everybody wants to play T20. Yes. Now, on one hand, uh, cricket is the most beautiful thing. On the other hand, you are sanctioning, I'm talking about ICC and BCA, you are sanctioning league after league. And, the, and, and T20, the whole uh, uh, sport has been reduced to so fast. No other sports has been uh, uh, cut down to this side. From five days to 50 overs, from 50 overs to 20 overs, now here T20. And who are playing and what, uh, what, how it, uh, bad it will have impact on the younger generation. You Absolutely. 20, uh, so much money. Absolutely. Bidhi Saab, there is a lot of excitement and monies when it comes to the franchise cricket as well as the, the, the other pajama cricket, the, the exhibition games and the clinics that these uh, players do. Take a step back. Jilani, I want to ask you about uh, the upcoming ODI series. What has been the major significant change in the team uh, squad that has come up? Would you like to, our viewers to just know exactly what it is? Yes, well... 
the, the team, the test team that competed against India, the ODI team will look very different. The team is almost completely different. A couple notable absences in the ODI team. There's no um, Nicholas Puran is unavailable. I know a lot of the Caribbean and people in India will be disappointed by that. They know the name Nicholas Puran from his exploits in the IPL. So he's not, the Cricket West Indies sent out a media release today. They did not state why he's unavailable. I know he's playing in Major League Cricket in the US right now. That maybe is a factor, but they didn't say clearly. Either Jason Holder is also not in that ODI team. Oh. And there are a couple other, but but one name coming back into the team, into the team is Shimron Hetmeyer. People in India will also know the yes. name Shimron Hetmeyer. He's, he's back in the team after being in and out of the team for many years due to fitness and other reasons. But Hetmeyer and O'Shane Thomas, he's also back in the team, uh, up, up and coming young fast bowler. So, but Nicholas Puran and Jason Holder being out are two notable absences for the West Indies, especially Absol Nicholas Puran. Absolutely. Jason Holder uh, went through a tough time considering that he lost the match uh, single-handedly against the Netherlands super over, if you, if you remember that thing. And he was completely distraught by the way he was hit out of the park by Netherlands player. But take a step back. What about Kevin Sinclair? Is he also one of the omissions there or is he, has he made the cut? One of the promising players? Yes, a bit, if I'm not mistaken, he's in the squad. He's an a, a exciting young player. His celebrations alone can tell you he's a really enthusiastic enthusiastic young man from Guyana. He's in the team, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. So he should also play an impact. He's a capable batsman as well. So we expect him to make an impact in this series, hopefully, once he gets to play. I want to ask Bedi Saab here, uh, one of the more astute uh, voices of the game. Bedi Saab, you've got two-time uh, World Cup winning skipper as their coach. You have Karl Hooper as the assistant coach and you have a nice a new uh, paraphernalia around it. So, when you talk about that, uh, Bedi Saab, do you think coaches play an important role in just to egg them up and take them forward? Or it's like the Maradona becoming the coach of a team and the team just getting out of the uh, World Cup qualifiers? You know what happened to Maradona after that? He didn't go to Brazil, uh, Argentina uh, that after South Africa um, uh, World Cup. I know that's your favourite tale. That's why I put that thing into your uh, discussion, sir. So, yes. I'm just saying for the sake of it that he was the biggest name in Argentina. He couldn't go to uh, face the public. Public was so annoyed with him. Not every good player can be a good coach. And at a particular cricket is one game and you learn and when you play in India, for India, or when you play for a country, that means you have done everything possible in your book, uh, technique-wise, bowling-wise, fielding-wise, that you are uh, uh, considered as a team. Now, after playing in the World Cup or after playing in the 11, representing the country, well, what can coach teach you? You have reached it through, unless you have been para uh, parachuted there, unless you, otherwise people play, start from school, then go to college, then do, play district tournament, then play Ranji Trophy, then play Dhir Trophy, then there are so many matches uh, around them, India A, India B, India C. After all this grinding, you come and get a place in uh, world, uh, Indian uh, uh, cricket team. And after that Indian cricket team, and you had, had gone through this grid, what can coach teach you? This is very surprising. In, when we won the first World Cup in 83, there was no coach, PR Man Singh was the manager. <laughs> so they played again. How many coaches West Indies had when they won the first two World Cups and third they reached the final? So I think the coach's role is overplayed and overdone as well as the cricket is concerned, in, as well as national teams are concerned. Coaches are very important in every sport at a grassroots level, as slightly higher, but not at the particular uh, at the, uh, top uh, level, uh, especially cricket is concerned. Uh, coaches may be most crucial in football, but in cricket, it, you learn and then the senior players are there. It is not a, at, uh, I don't see anybody teaching other Virat Kohli, or for uh, uh, Sharma, or for anybody, uh, Ashwin, you name it, Arvinda Jadija, what can coach teach them? Tell me. That is very interesting. It is not unlike football, where you change the tactics with every move. You can bring out, uh, be, uh, take out the player and uh, bring in a new player. And that is coach tactics. But here, what can you tell, tell them? Only a captain can tell them or a manager can tell them, go and play well. Go to, uh, and put it according to put, uh, your potential. 
Now, what can coach teach uh, uh, Virat Kohli or uh, Rohit Sharma? I agree. Or, I agree. Or, I mean, Absolutely. So, them. so the coach's role is little overhyped, and they and they're, they're made out to be some some uh, great innovators who could who could change the game. Of course, there are some, but but it's not a thumb rule. Yeah. Bedi sir. Only the team on the field. Unlike other games, unlike I'm making it very clear. Right. Football sir. coach, independent football uh, or coach, but in cricket, uh, the top level or the international. I am quoting Javed Miana. I am not a great fan of him, but he made a very pertinent uh, question uh, uh, query. What is, he was asked to uh, about the coaches in Pakistan national team. He said, "What is the need of coach as a national team? You can have somebody, um, the, your uh, manager." Or some uh, extra, but to make a Rahul Dravid coach and other four or five coaches, everybody, nobody knows what they are doing. So it is the players who are playing. I, I, I don't think that there is much of a role of a coach right. in this level, test level, sir. Because of all, I, I'm afraid, Mr. Bedi, I'll have to interrupt here because of my producer who's just uh, said that in crossing discussion has just moved out of time. But one last. Thing from you, what is your assessment of the three match series? What is your prediction, sir? India has advantage. India has upper hand. All right, Chilani, yours. Well, I'm 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 hoping for West Indies victory, but I have to agree with my Mr. Harpal. Um, I think India will win two one. Two -one All right. India. Well, two one and three zero. I think that's what Mr. Bedi said. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.